Hello and welcome to the Cisco CyberOps Associate Lab video series. I'm going to be walking through each of the major labs of the Cisco CyberOps Associate NetAcad curriculum. So let's go and let's jump on in. All right, in this lab, we are looking at lab 4.4.4, .4, locating log files. This is going to be focusing within the Linux distro, again, for the CyberOps course. How this is going to work is I have the official Cisco NetAcad lab file outside. We're going to be using the CyberOp Workstation VM, and we're just going to be working through the lab steps. So again, off on my screen is the lab steps, and we're just working through the lab. So let's go and let's jump into our CyberOps Workstation and see what we can do. All right, I'm going to log in as analyst. The password is CyberOps. All right, once we're logged in, I'm just going through part one. I'm just going to go through each of the steps. We're going to be looking at specifically log files, also uh, looking at files. We're going to be looking at how these files are used for the log events, how logs are used to look at software programs, background processes, services, transaction between services, the OS, and everything else. It is up to the individual application developer to develop and to conform to log files conventions. Again, not required, but it's up to the individual developer to push those. Software documentation should include on its log files what structure they have. So I'm looking at part one, step one. Here's an example of a log file. So Wednesday, March 22 at 1123, I'm assuming AM 2017, this is a task that happened. We can also notice it is done through Apache. So we can assume it is done through an issue with Apache. A few other pieces of information are again, web transactional data, like an IP address, the time and the detail of the transaction, and we can see that this is broken down into five parts. The timestamp, the type, the process ID. So here's the time. Here is the type. Here's the process ID. Here's the description. And so based off of that, you can describe kind of what's happening. You should be able to do this for pretty much any log file. All right, so to wrap up part A, step one, we need to get to a command terminal. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in a few times. All right, with that said, I want to cat or concatenate a log file. That just essentially means read. log stash tutorial log because that's one of the log files that we are looking at I'm gonna go ahead and maximize my window and here we can see details we can see the IP address we can see the date we can see it was a git request we can see the response we can see the agent, so we can see some details here. So question at the end of part one, step one, is the output above still considered a web transaction? Essentially, yes, it is a web event. The fields are in a different order, but you do see a get message and the presence of a client IP address. It also does reference various web browsers as well as the web, the main web application, HTTP. Here it's HTTP v1.1. Uh, so this confirms this is a web server log. The format's different because the service was configured to record different fields in a different order. So here the developer decided to take a slightly different view of how to conform to logs. All right, so with that said, let's move on to step two. 
So, step two, any software can keep logs, operating systems, applications, anything. Linux, we will use the var log directory. That's where we store logs. So, to point that out, if we do a ls var logs, I hope if I actually type correctly. So where am I? I'm at ls Alright, so let's try that again. Instead of doing cat, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a cd to var. Oh, and that's what happens when you fat finger it. So cd var. I'm doing ls to see what's there. We can see we have our cache, our db, the empty, the lib, the local. We have a log directory, so I will cd to log. And you notice that we may not act be able to access it, which that, that is fine. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back. So I'm back in my home directory or my, my main directory. Sorry, not my home directory. CD home ls CD analyst. All right, now I'm back in my home directory. So Case in point, you notice trying to get to our var log doesn't always work. So I'm going to do a sudo more var log slash messages. Put in our password, cyberops. And there we go. We can see logs. We can see what's going on. And this happens to be not today, but it gives us details of our log. And you'll notice it gives us our more option, so we can read through all of them. I'm going to go ahead and do a control Z, break out of it. So I'm going to do a sudo cd var log. See, it just does not like that. No, yeah, but I can CD directly there. So ls, and there's all of the logs stored underneath our log directory. So apparently it did not like us jumping uh, one directory at a time. So it is what it is. So you'll notice sometimes I'm doing sudo, sometimes I'm not. Sudo is a way to elevate your privileges specifically because there's some directories that are protected some directories are not so trying to move to certain directories you may not have access to them so if you sudo them you normally have the elevated permissions to access whatever you need access to all right at the end of part one step two the Again, to exit out, you can do a control C or control Z. That will kick you out. Log file is very important for troubleshooting. Assume that a user of a specific system reported that the network operations were slow around 4.20 a.m. on May 19th. Can we f find evidence to support what's going on? And the answer is sure, we definitely can. If we did our log again. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to sudo more. We are in MAR. I'm just going to keep holding down a space bar. See if we go to April. So we're March 26. Now we're in April. So we want to look for May 19th. So we, we have a little ways. 
normal log analysis is done more regularly, but it really just depends. Oh, it went from April to July real quick. So I'm going to scroll up to May. You could also grep this so that you can only look for certain months. So there's lots of different ways to view. Well, April, July. So what's really interesting is you'll notice there's no May. The answer sheet does say that if you are able to find May 19th at 4 1953 through 4 21 27 network card was flopping or flapping more specifically switching from up to down well that's not going to be we are in the messages log so yeah that that is direct log Whatever reason, it opted not to show the May option. And sometimes that just happens, so it is what it is. All right, moving on. Part two, locating log files in an unknown system. So again, with the CyberOp workstation, uh, it does include a Nginx, lightweight web server. Again, Nginx was installed on our VM. So when we're working with new software, the first step is to look at the man page. So I'm going to clear, type enter a few times, man, e, or sorry, n, g, i, n, x, man, so that we can see the manual for this, and this being the specific service, nginx. And again, it's an HTTP and reverse proxy server, mail pro uh, server, and more. It's a lightweight web server. All right, so you're going to notice it's the manual. And we're going to keep scrolling. And we have our signals. Then we have our debug log. Again, to enable a debug log, reconfigure Nginx to build with the debugging option. If we do a config with a tac tac with tac debug, then we can see the debug level. So we, uh, you can set the debug level. Here's our error log. Here's our path to our debug option. And we can add this portion of code. So again, the important ones here are to recognize you could do it with a debug. And from there, you can do what you need to. So the manual page also contains information on the files used by Nginx as well. So if we keep scrolling down, we can see our PID path, our conf path, our error log path, and so forth. Normally, we want to look at our config path. That's the main configuration. We also want to look at our error log path. Typically, that's going to be our var log file. So we want to go ahead and do, um, I believe it is part two. We are on Step D, before looking at the uh, Nginx files, we're going to use the ps and grep command to ensure Nginx is running. So we can go ahead and back out of our man page. Hit Q, goes back to our main page. It goes back to our terminal, not main page. It goes back to our terminal. All right, so after we get back from reviewing our man page, what we want to do is we want to... We're on part two, step D. We want to see if our Nginx is running. So if we do a PS AX pipe grep, spell it correctly, engine INX, we can see it's running. It's not. A pipe is above your enter key. So if it's not running, that's okay. We could do a sudo user sbin nginx cyberops is our password. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the up arrow and open up our ps again. 
So we can see that it is running. So now we can do some more stuff with it. Again, if you get this, it is not running. Go ahead and start it with a sudo space forward slash usr forward slash sbin forward slash nginx. Again, also, uh, I'm just following the lab guide. The lab guide walks you through. I'm just reading the note under step two, part D, outlining how to get it running. If you need to, to restart it, you can kill it. I'm gonna actually go ahead and kill it. So if you do a sudo pkill engine x, you gotta spell it correctly, with attack C, then you can do a, a custom, custom underscore server dot conf. So again, what we're going to be doing is you can kill it with just a sudo p kill nginx, or if you want to start it with a custom script, you can do a custom script if you want. All right, so only one pattern can be provided. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a pseudo p kill. Oh, I was getting ahead of myself, my apologies. So we're not gonna do a p kill. I wanna start it with a custom script. Get a little bit ahead of myself. So pseudo nginx, and I'm loading the custom script. I've ran through the lab a few times a day, so I just kind of put it weird, or put the steps in my head. So this sudo nginx with attack C custom server conf, this will load the custom server conf we had set up in a previous lab. All right, so now it is started again. We can test the server by opening a web browser and going to 127.0.0.1 colon 8080. All right, so let's go and let's do that. I'm going to open up my web browser. Now keep in mind, these VMs are made not to have internet. So, dot one, colon, colon, 80. And there we go, we have our test file, and it is good. So if you wish to start in your next with the default configuration, we can, again, we can kill it sudo p kill nginx and then we could do a sudo space user bin nginx and that opens so let's go and let's do that i'm going to hit the up arrow i'm going to kill nginx i'm going to just go ahead and load nginx and i'm going to go ahead and refresh this nope it may take a second let me get rid of the 8080. There we go. The custom script allowed us to do port 8080. The uh, regular script has nothing. Oh, it is. All right. So, and here we can see that we do get a error logged, failed, no such directory listed. So, our local host we got a get request for this icon so it generated some errors which that was the point the nice thing is you can configure this however you need to the nice thing is by design the cyber ops workstation uses a lot of the default locations definitions but you can customize that's the nice thing with linux uh, the var, uh, var log directory all the various log files you can always do ls to start looking through items. Important is, I'm gonna go ahead and clear. We can also look at other directories. So ls, our etc directory. So we can see some additional files inside the etc directory. And if we go through, we can see our nginx so again you're going to notice it's a folder 
in the uh, output, you can also uh, look at the number of files as well. So we can also then go one step further. If we do an ls, I'm going to do attack l, and then we can give the location. So we're in etc in gen x. Now we can see the contents of that directory, and the ls tag l gives us our read permissions. We can see if it's a directory, if it's what user permissions, what group permissions, and what special permissions we have. It's owned by root, and these are all the contents of the files. We can see a nginx conf, we can see a custom server conf, we can see other file types. We can cat the nginx conf if we want to. We can uh, ca uh, cat or concatenate almost any of the files. So again, to do this, we would use the cat command. Let's go and let's do that. So we're gonna go ahead and do a cat. That's short for concatenate. ETC engine x nginx.conf. You can also tab this out if you're typing kind of slow, because I'm uh, typing facing away from my monitor, so my typing is a little slower. All right, hit enter. And now we can see the contents of our directory. You can use more or less to view uh, the same files. You can use other uh, editing tools as well. But for our example, cat works just fine. So note the lines that start with uh, the pound sign, they're commented out, meaning they will be omitted. All right, so that takes care of step G. Step H, we want to go ahead and let's clear. They want to uh, have us look at our log file. So ns tac l var slash log. So here we have, again, the color denotes a directory, and so does the D. So you'll notice all of the colors have Ds at the very beginning, that's just short for directory. So again, we can see these are the contents of our file. If we go through them, audit auth auth btm or btemp. Daemon, errors, everything, failing logs, kernel. Uh, we have a nginx log as well. That's probably where we're going to be looking for our nginx logs. So let's go and let's do a sudo. Let's do an ls, tack l, because again, it's probably needing permissions. var log nginx. Cyber, cyber ops. And here we can see our logs. We can see none of them are directories and we can see the permissions for them. These are very likely the log files that Nginx is using. Your output may be slightly different. You should notice there are GZ files. These are GZ log files were generated by a log rotation service. That's what generated them. So you might see log1.gz, log2.gz, and so forth. A new empty main log file was then created to be used to store the latest log file. So the top option right here, this is the current log file, and as we go through this, it will then cycle down through a one dot or a number dot gz. All right, so this just gives us lots and lots of details. So there is a problem with this. This doesn't give us everything that we actually need. What happens when we want to monitor log files in more real time? So that takes us to part three, which is monitoring log files in real time. There are additional commands that we can use, like the more or less command, to actually look at contents of a file that gives us more material. All right, so let's look at some details. So we're looking specifically at like the tell command. 
the tail command by default will give us the last 10 lines of a document. So let's go and let's look at that. So we'll do a sudo tell. Again, that's the last 10 lines. Var log nginx access log. There's not that many uh, lines of code, so we only get one, two, three, four lines of code. But if we had a large list, then that's what we would be getting. And you can use tail with pretty much any text document. You may have to do a sudo with it depending on the permission area. But again, the goal with a sudo is to raise your permissions. The goal of tail is specifically to look at the last 10 lines. So if you don't see any log entries, navigate to our web browser, refresh the page a few times, and you will see some connection. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Get rid of the 8080. Put the 8080 back. All right. Well, check our access log again. And these are the same requests. We could also use some additional commands, like uh, maybe we don't want to see the last uh, 10 lines by default. Maybe we want to see the last five lines. So I could do a tack in, tack in for number five, and that shows me the last five. Let's say I want to do the last two lines. So I can be as specific as I want. And again, this could be done in real time. It can be refreshing our log. Right now, we've just been kind of doing snapshots of our logs, but there's definitely ways to actually look at things in real time. So with that said, let's go ahead. Let's get rid of the tack in. Let's do attack F. The F option is to monitor. And you'll notice one, two, three, four. It's not actually. It's not refreshing correctly. That's a little weird, but that's what it is. With the F, any of the refreshing should actually have generated a new log attempt. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of it. Open up a new browser. Nope, and it's just not generating a new request. I bet just because of the uh, no internet, it's probably just loading a cached page. So we could clear the cache and then try again, but that's more outside the scope of this. The big thing is understanding that with the TAC F, it's real time. So as you do things, it should actually provide you a real time response. And to get out of the real time response, control Z, and that will end or stop the real time log monitoring. So you may want to have, you know, two or three key logs that are open for review. So our lab document does show that a refreshing should generate uh, new requests. I'm almost positive because the, uh, the modification of no internet, it's loading a cached page. You could give it time and that should uh, generate additional requests, but I don't want to wait that long. So we're just going to move forward. So that was part three, step D. Step E is, again, in the web browser, go to the address. We're going to notice that we have our requests. Here we have our Firefox 75, and you'll notice they're all 75. Because the tell is still running, 
assuming uh, the tell is still running. As you uh, refresh them, you should actually be able to get contents. All right, so apparently a lot of people have this same issue. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to redo my log. I'm going to navigate to it. Again, it did not generate a new log. So, Control Shift R. Oh, there it goes. It was just a cached page with my port 8080. But as I refresh it, it generates our new log, which that's what we wanted to see. So that is what tell does. Or that's what the TAC F does. Tell does the default last 10, but tell with the TAC F is a real-time monitor. Again, control Z or control C to terminate our job or to terminate uh, our TAC F monitoring session. All right, so that is the end of the lab. However, there is a bonus tool, not required by a lot of people, but it's a bonus tool, the journal control. Again, CyberOp Workstation VM is based on the Arc Linux, categorization of a Linux distro. Arc is designed to be lightweight, very minimalistic, and it's just an all-around easy, uh, low-resource-utilized uh, VM. Typically, the, uh, the init has a process uh, ID of one, and that initiate will set the rules for everything that comes in after it. SystemMD is a modern uh, int system design, kind of helping uh, Linux configuration and service behavior across all the different Linuxes. So we can use a journal control to start looking at some detail. So in the bonus tool, we're looking at our journal control. All right, so the best thing we can do, let's go ahead and clear our screen. Let's go ahead and let's do our journal control without any additional material to see what's going on. So if you do J-O-U, hit tab, it spells it all out for you. So here is all of the journaling components. I'm just hitting spacebar to load all of the other lines. I'm just going to hold down spacebar so it loads all of them. We're at a few thousand now. June, July. There we go. So at least for me, I have 6,014 lines of journal code. So the output is very similar uh, to what's in the document. You're going to see, again, simple log. It starts with the daytime. Uh, it looks at the name of the system and other material. The journal control includes a number of functionalities like page scroll. Uh, you could do enter. You have a lot of options. Uh, you'll notice you're entering and spacebar at the end doesn't do anything. Control Z or control C will stop it. It does take a minute. So let's elevate it. Let's do a pseudo journal. Oh, journal J O U R N A C T L with attack B cyber ops. And now we have a little bit more option. The TAC B option is used to display the boot related log entries as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down the space bar. We should get a few more. All right, there we go. So here are boot log portion. There are 1800 of them. And again, the boot log is going to be more specifically to items related to the booting process. So uh, again, you have a lot more control when looking at our journal control system. You also have some additional options. I'm going to do a control C again. 
hit the up arrow. If you want to do the last boot, you can do attack one. And that's going to be all the boot data. If you want to do the last two boots, you'd be at attack two. And again, this is just the boot data it collects. So lots of options and a lot of things that you can capture to review if you wanted to. So we have a lot of other options we can explore. So I'm going to get rid of the tack B. I want to go ahead and I want to list the boots. So instead of having it give me data on the last two boots, I want the option to list the previous boots. So I can do a tack tack list tack boots. And again, you can also look at the man page to, to look at some of these options, but this will give us the boot data. And it'll tell you the last times that I booted this VM to do any work. Counting down from zero, because zero is my last, that's my current one, that's today, and then each preceding one. You can also be specific, you can say time range. So instead of list boot, we can do a pseudo journal control. Since two hour ago. And that will load any of the boots from the last two hours, which happens to be just one. So again, you have a lot of options with our control. It's just a matter of spending the time to become familiar with it. We can also do from, you know, the last 10 days, for example. So once it stops, uh, we'll get rid of that in the last 10 days. The lab says one day, I, I get that, but the last 10 days gives me both the 24th and the 30th, so I get a little bit more detail. So you can say specific words, and that helps to actually uh, filter it down as well. All right, going on to step F, you can also display log entries uh, related to a specific service. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this instance. And I'm going to go ahead and do a sudo. Oh, haven't stopped yet. Come on. Oh. Got a little bit greedy. It's going too fast. So it's stopping uh, my second instance of it. So we're going to use the tack U, and that way we can look at specific instances of a specific service. So we're going to do a sudo journal control, tack U, and we're going to be looking at the engine X service. All right, so I'll get rid of all of that. All right, so sudo journal control, tack U. That will let us pull up our services, ng and x. And we want dot service because it's running as a service. And we can pull details specifically about this service. If there was a reboot, if there was a capture, it's going to be logged. So that takes care of step F. We can also use a tack F with our journal control. That way it can be used as a real-time monitoring system. All right, so if we get rid of all of that, we do a tack F. Then with that, it gives us a real-time monitoring. You may have to do sudo. Sometimes it makes you do it every time. Sometimes it does not. 
So if we do things that would actually generate a log, it would then pull up our log. So we have some options here. We can also combine the two. I will end this. So if we do attack you with uh, engine X as our service, we can do attack F. And that way we can see it loaded as well. So you can mix and match our flags. And if we go ahead and Our first one went ahead and pulled it. If I do a control shift R, it ref control shift R actually reloads the page, ignoring cache. So we actually generated additional attempts. So keep the uh, command above and open up a new web browser. Uh, if you have the custom server config with the port 8080 that is actually refreshing that will also work again we will see that we're getting a mr uh fave icon dot icon file that's fine whatever control c or control z to go ahead and exit out of our journal and that is the end of this bonus material there are reflections at the end for example log files are extremely important for troubleshooting why is that Log file locations follow conventions, but ultimately, it's the choice of the developer. What do you think about that? Is that a good idea? More often than not, log files and log information, locations, file name, etc., is included in the documentation. Not always, most of the time. If the documentation doesn't provide useful information on the logs, maybe a combination of web searches or system investigations could be used. Why? would someone not include the log details in the man page. Clocks should always be synchronized to ensure that the systems have the correct time to unify logs across all of these systems. Lastly, it's important to understand when specific events take place for investigative purposes. Why are we caring about time? Why are we caring about our log review? What is that? What does that tell us or what is it, after the details does that give us? All right, that is it for this lab. So again, this was lab 4.4.4, .4 locating log files and exploring them. And that is the end of the lab. Thank you. All right, so that does it for this lab video. A few suggestions would be one, run through the lab a second time, trying to do it by yourself. Two, I would do a summary of kind of what you learned, where you struggled, and keep that type of journal going so that you can build off of it. Third, and finally, take time to reflect. These labs start off fairly easy and then they grow in complexity, so some of the labs you may have to redo a few times to fully grasp what's going on. If you have any questions or any concerns, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.